Ladies and gentlemen, finally the day has come. After one month of preparation, welcome to the first ever No Code Rumble, where eight lunatic makers from around the world come together to create products that they love and, uh, and want to share with the world. Um, this is going to be a high pressure event where we all come from different disciplines, different backgrounds, and we're all going to be cross pollinating and sharing our skills with each other to create exceptional products. And we want this to be a transparent experience where we expose ourselves in the most brutal way, our mistakes, our successes, our knowledge, our creativity, um, our failures, and hopefully our triumphs. Um, and at the end of the four weeks, by the beginning of April, you're going to be able to see what we've created together. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our first rumbler, Jack Vaughn from London, the man myth legend. Uh, he is building Lean Musician, which is a platform that helps you learn about music, learn about composition, and it introduce you, introduces you to these concepts in really unique ways. And that's what caught my attention when I decided to bring Jack on to the Rumble with us. And today we're going to be exploring that process with him, his creative process. We're going to be discussing how uh, we're going to be taking his current website and rebuilding it uh, and turning it into a platform. Uh, that inspires hopefully millions one day around the world. Uh, he was inspired by Eric Ries, who is the creator of the Lean methodology of creating products. And we're approaching it now and saying, what if, you know, what if we approach music in the same way, in a lean fashion, as opposed to, you know, here's this really complicated structure for learning and whatever. What if we just simplified it, broke it down to its core elements and allowed more people to take their first step into their first uh, foray into you know this world not just music but no code tools no code platforms around the world so the structure of the no code rumble is that we're not competing against each other we're competing together to create great products um and we've had so much support from the community in just such a short amount of time this all happened in the spur of the moment that's the beauty of this whole thing is we didn't plan this 10 year you know three years in advance or something we just came out and said you know what what if like all of us just decide to get in a ring together and do this? And immediately we had some of the top companies, the top podcasts, blogs, uh, tools and services come together and say, we have to be part of this because what better way to demonstrate the power of no code today than by allowing these makers to live stream the process, expose how it's done, answer questions from the community during live streams and just, you know, be part of that process. Usually creation process is really close, you know, behind closed doors experience. And in our case, it's completely open and we're opening ourselves up like that, which is, you know, it can be really tough, especially when you haven't tested your idea. You don't know what people are going to think. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Are they going to boo me on stage? You know, that's what I call the X factor effect. You know, when you, you, you you think you're going to be the next, you know, Michael Jackson, you're like, let me get on stage. And there's like, 1,000 people right in the audience who are going to be cheering on for me or booing me off stage. And that's kind of the experience we have here today. But we are not, this is not some antagonistic kind of event. That's the one thing I want to make very clear. We really want to show that the best products are created when you work together. Um, and that, that spirit is what no code is all about. That these tools are making it so much easier for someone like Jack, who is a musician, to go and actually create his platform instead of having to change his entire course in life. <laughs> you know, before it was like, hey, you wanna be a designer? You gotta go and just switch careers <laughs> and become, you know, to, to understand that space. And now it's just super simple and efficient. Uh, so we're gonna spend the next half hour to an hour breaking down that creative process, how these products are coming together. Um, and we'd love your feedback as well at the end um, to let us know if we're on the right track, how you feel these products should go. Um, and to really just be super transparent with us because normally products don't get this kind of feedback so early on. Usually you have to launch it and then it fails <laughs> or it blows up and you're like, okay, I had the right idea. But in this kind of environment where we can build really fast, really efficiently, you're gonna be able to follow our progress each week and see where we were last week and where we're planning to go next week. So we're gonna have a weekly summary uh, uh, on every Sunday that we're sending out. Uh, please go to rumble.pro to sign up, um, uh, to subscribe, um, it's free. And this whole event is essentially just us sharing our passion for what we do and proving to the world that to do something like this today, all it takes is just deciding to. You no longer have all these barriers standing in your way. You could be anywhere in the world, just like we are right now. None of us, none, none of us in the Rumble have actually met each other. 
This is all us coming together for the first time. And we're going to prove to you that passion is really all you need and that commitment, that resilience to get going. So without further ado, Jack, I'd love to learn about your platform and see where you're going to be taking music for us. Yeah. Thanks. Echo. Um, really, really excited to be involved in this. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm Jack. I um, uh, am founder of Lean Musician. I also work for Glide as well, who uh, are involved in this. Um, and those are the kind of two main things that I do. Lean Musician has been a side hustle for kind of three years or so. Um, I've been a mus musician my whole life since I was like seven. And uh, I guess to really condense the story of Lean Musician for me is that I think like most musicians, uh, but I can only speak for myself, I really struggled to learn because I didn't have many mentors. Like there's no one in my family who's musical, but like I've always been totally passionate about it and just wanting to do it all the time. And so having to very, I had to be very self-motivated and like teach myself from a very young age. And I think that uh, has made me very, very interested in the process of learning. Like, the, like how do you deconstruct stuff and learn it in the most effective way? And it was only when I started reading The Lean Startup and starting to learn principles about design and a little bit about development as well, that this kind of cross fertilization of all these ideas kind of came together. And I was like, okay, this is what I've been doing for a long time, but now I'm able to put labels on it and like take concepts from development and or like design and then like apply them to music. So that's when I, when I read Eric's book, Eric Reese's book, The Lean Startup, I was like, I love that term. So um, yeah, that's Lean Musician really. And that's what I'm up to. So it kind of brings in a healthy amount of income. I wouldn't say it's like uh, something I could totally support my family off, but it's, it's good. And what I really want to do is take it to the next level. And the big, big vision uh, for Lean Musician is kind of twofold at the moment, although I know these things can change. Um, I want to be the masterclass for musicians, uh, as in masterclass.com, if you don't know already, amazing platform. Uh, and in the future, I want to be uh, creating essentially AI assisted composing tools. So composers sit down at their DAW nowadays and have amazing tools to be able to create sound with, uh, but not as much to be able to help them generate ideas. And there's a whole host of things I could go into. So yeah, those are the two main things that I want to head towards the big vision. But at the moment, it's just me creating courses. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I know we also talked about having collaborations with other composers in the industry yeah. um, that can come together. And we also even went a step further and said, what if you brought like two people who are complete opposites and put yeah. them in a room? Like, you know, like in the case of Masterclass, if you had like Gordon Ramsay and Junkie XL coming together, <laughs> I would be terrified to see what these two would create. <laughs> but I think um, the, that's one of my frustrations with the uh, you know musical platforms in general is just how uninspired they actually are even though they're dealing with such an inspirational medium <laughs> like mm -hmm. it just doesn't feel like there's that creativity infused in it, it doesn't feel like they're they're taking me on a journey it's more like okay here's a piano here's some white and black keys you press it a sound comes out it's like well we know that you know but I'm not, I, I feel like people, when they create products, they don't realize that you're actually building a relationship with people. That's what a product is. It's not about selling something. The selling is a result of the product that you've built. Um, but if you just say, I'm building a product because I want to sell and I, this is my ROI and this is what I'm aiming for. It's like, well, that's 99% of the products like that fail. Mm. Um, and, you know, so the value proposition has to be, I'm building something that elevates my relationship with this particular topic. So some of the other, uh, you know, rumblers we're, we're, we're having uh, with us, we're going to be introducing them um, each week, one by one, specifically because we don't want it to come across like, here's all eight rumblers, and now they're just fighting it out, you know, for a cash prize of a million dollars. Like, <laughs> like, I don't want this to turn into The Bachelor. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, Jack, uh, you're going home now. <laughs> like that kind of thing. There's a bus that takes you away, like the slow motion. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think, you know, at the, at uh, Ritika Charn, for example, who's doing uh, No Good, a K-N-O-W, which is a play on No Good. She specifically, you know, lives in India and, you know, she works with Google and she lives in one of the most saturated markets on the planet. And she's like, I want to find these products that are just, Number one, really unique. Number two are amazing alternatives to like unhealthy products today. You know, like uh, whether it's plastic products or it's, you know, whatever it is. And uh, Jack is kind of doing the same thing with music where it's like, I'm going to go sift through this super saturated market in music and just find a complete different voice, find a different way to like convince people. And I think at the end of the day, the, the number one goal of your courses 
is to convince people who don't know anything about music to be like, I want to be a part of this movement. So without further ado, I want to talk a little more about the comparisons with the industry. You know, I want to, uh, it's so important to highlight why these things don't work. Mm. It's easier to say, I just don't like it. The design isn't nice. You know, I hear that so many times from clients. They're like, yeah, it's just not nice. What does a nice even mean? Like, like <laughs> such, a, such yeah. a subjective, you know, like, um, you know, kind of a thing to say. So I want us to give examples to the community and to other rumblers too. This would be very inspiring for them when they watch this. To be like, this is how you should dissect your product. Go into the nitty gritty. Explain to me why this doesn't work for you. And I think during that process, you know, there will be times when you feel a little stuck. Like, well, how do I explain this? And that's a good thing. Not being able to explain that is a testament to you need to spend more time understanding this problem. So why don't you share a screen with us, Jack, and let's go over um, like some examples of how other people, for example, are tackling this industry. Cool. Um, so, uh, so it's worth saying straight away that like these like aren't necessarily direct competitors or whatever, but I haven't found anyone who I really, really dislike what they do. Like all of their content's fantastic. So, uh, for example, this guy, Piano with Johnny is like really successful, does a load of good stuff, fantastic teacher and stuff like that. But it's just the website that for me is like, yeah. Not, not so it doesn't tell that story, right? It just, it feels like a dead end almost. Like here's this page, here's a box, here's a button. Click on it or go away. <laughs> kind of like that Yeah, kind of you could change the background of this website like so that he's not on a piano and change the title and it would be a corporate website in a, in a flash. A like there's, there's nothing interesting about the design, although his content's very good and he's a great guy. Um, so it doesn't make me feel musical. And I think that's the main thing that people want to feel. Like that's, yeah. that's the fundamental thing. Why people struggle with music is that they're trying to express themselves and it's so frustrating when you can't express yourself. So if I can do that on a practical level through the courses, that's amazing. But if I can give people that sense of like expression through the site, I know that sounds vague, but uh, that's something that we'll be unlocking together, hopefully. Yeah, um, and I always like to do that, find creative solutions to a lot of these problems. Like, how do I tell this story? Because I treat websites and products like a character in a book. I don't treat it like it's just this, you know, landing page with menus and whatever. Because visually, like, if you really go deep into it, that's like just saying music is just a bunch of sounds, right? But it's not, it's a character. It has its own, you know, Hans Zimmer doesn't, I watched his masterclass on masterclass.com, which I highly recommend. And he does, he tells this story of like, when you press this key, like just visualize what that actually means. Like not just like, okay, it's a nice, you know, you're playing a vibrato or something. It's just like, no, like this is what it is, right? So I look at a website exactly the same way. Uh, and I love how actually all the rumblers feel the same way. They're like, the reason we want to rebuild our platforms or build it from scratch and build some, a new complete idea is because we feel like our story isn't being told. And when they say our story, they don't mean the story of my products. They mean the story of my industry. Like Andrew Wilkinson is working on insured nomads hmm. and insurance is one of the most boring industries you could possibly try to re reimagine, reinvent. But we spent hours with, uh, with, uh, with him just going with this whole thing. Andrew Jett um, as, well as well, isn't it? Andrew Jett, I think you said Wilkinson, which is another, oh, another I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, just, like, just so people don't get confused when they're trying to find yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the founder of Dribble. <laughs> it's the other one. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, um, I had so many amazing calls with him, just uh, understanding insurance with him a little better. And yeah. he opened his eyes to the possibilities of like, Sako, like, I'm not tackling insurance for just, you know, uh, like typically for, you know, the typical audience. I want to tackle people who just don't care about it at all. Mm. That's such an interesting challenge, yeah. especially for someone, you know, a creative like myself. I don't want to just tackle the easy problem. Like, okay, here's the client who needs the 50th blog, you know, like, um, and I want to be able to look at those kind of projects. So that was actually my deciding factor, like which projects I want to get involved with. Um, and I feel like Lean Musician does that perfectly. Um, it says that, you know what? Yeah, we do courses, but actually that's not the point. The point is, can you tell, craft a visual experience that makes someone who would normally just click away in two seconds flat and just get that person to stay there and just be like, wow, I have to yeah. see this. So to that end, Jack, I think we're gonna get the cat out of the bag now. We're gonna open Pandora's box. We have this element, this branding style that we came up with together, guys, that just blew both of us away. Um, and I think it's gonna be 
it's going to define what we're building as a platform in a big way. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick. Here we go. There we are. So here we have Patrick Pacheman, who basically created this series of videos where he performs So he performs these songs live like this, I mean, uh, on YouTube and people stay not just for the music, but for the visual experience. He's been able to take something as simple as a YouTube video and make it more than a YouTube video and make it an experience. And that's what Jack is talking about. That's how Jack inspired me about the platform. Because when I saw it for the first time, I told him straight up, like, bro, like what's the difference between like every other course platform on the planet? Like, you know, how are we going to change this? He's like, well, that's a thing. Like I want to, for example, talk about pricing. Like I don't want this to be just priced at, you know, like buy my course or something. Like I want to, for example, find a way to bring in more people to try out, you know, try it out. So he's doing, he's going with a completely different pricing model of like, I'm going to let you actually check out, like say if my course has 10 chapters, by the way, normally how many chapters does, does your course have? Oh, it's like they range between eight and 12 hours long with like 50 lectures or more. They're like really big. Okay. Well, see, that's the thing. It takes you about, I think, four to six months to make it, right? Yeah. Whilst doing other things, obviously. Yeah. 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 I mean, but that's, it's not just a basic course. That's actually a full experience that you're offering. Yeah. So um, what your idea was is what if I can offer a few of those experiences um, live uh, and people can see what I'm offering and then they can come and already get the rest of the course. Yeah. Um, and it kind of surprises me why everyone doesn't do that. It's yeah. such an obvious direction to go in. <laughs> so what that, we thought of, yeah, go on. No, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that's one of the, like the main features that I want us to really like knock out of the park is the course taking experience. Um, maybe I could share my screen as well briefly. Yeah, please do. Please. Um, So uh, if you're in the no-code space, you obviously know about Webflow <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm, I do all the education for Glide and university for Webflow is fantastic. They're great, great teachers, um, but particularly their course taking experience on their website is really, really good. So if we, so this is the homepage, very clear call to action of like, you know, what are you trying to learn? Um, but then when you go to a course, you can see there's this kind of really nice layout of stuff. And my plan is to list all of my courses on my site like this, because currently there are hosted on Skillshare and Udemy and I will still do that. But one of the things I want to do is like provide maybe the first half of the course even or a third of it for free so that people can really decide whether they like it or not. At the moment, we'll show my site in a minute, but basically if we go to the courses section, when you click on it, it just takes you to Udemy and then you're yeah. on a totally different platform. What I'd love mm -hmm. is a kind of really nice course taking experience here where people can we really exercise the freemium model, like really give value. Like I'm, I'm I know it's like a, an easy thing to say and whatever, and everyone says it, but like I genuinely, because like most of the people watching this, like if you're on the web all the time, you do work on, on the internet for what you do. You're just saturated with content. You're saturated with people trying to sell to you. And like, for me, I really want to make sure that there's like people have to work to almost buy something almost you know that they're they're really getting value and then they can choose to buy it so um, i think that's a really good point um and uh to that end with the with the university i uh, i think you're building a similar concept a similar university where it's like i i my goal is even if you come to my website and don't sign up you're still leaving with impact mm. i've still influenced you in some yeah. way right where being influenced with noise and rubbish all day long, you know, uh, wherever we live, it's just so, so cluttered that it's such a breath, breath of fresh air when you visit someone's product for the first time. And it's like, this person genuinely wants to just make my life a little better today. Hmm. Um, and with all the rumblers, this is what I'm encouraging them. And I'm saying, guys, you should have a freemium model for everything you do. That is the way to go. 
And you know, my philosophy in life is 90% give, 10% take. And I think that when you, when you do that genuinely, um, people resonate and they will reciprocate. Um, they're not going to just be you know, greedy hogs. Um, they are going to want to collaborate with you. For example, there's a composer named Rob Dugan who's influenced my musical style a lot. Um, you know, I come from a musical background, um, artistic family that's been traveling all my life essentially. So that's where I get most of my creative influences that I've been exposed to so many different cultures that it's like it's hard to live within barriers when you've been <laughs> breaking, crossing barriers your whole life. There is no boundaries anymore, right? So um, Rob Dugan, uh, did uh, famously the Club to Death uh, Corivano uh, mix um, for The Matrix. And that became super popular, you know? And he did one album called, um, uh, called um, uh, Furious Angels. Uh, and it became an absolute hit, a smash. And then for like over a decade or something, uh, he just disappeared. He, he was, you know, working, obviously producing music for different artists and stuff, he's very popular. Um, but he's very private and he's like, I just wanted to get back to you, my community, when I felt that I had something genuine to say. And he just came out with his recent LPs and I just like, my, my skin was just like, my hair was standing on end when I heard it. And I was like, this is it. And what's interesting is if you go right now, Jack, you go to BitTorrent or something like that and you try to get his music, you won't find it. His community is so loyal that they don't even torrent. They don't put his music on torrent sites with, uh, for that reason, right? Almost every other artist is just torrents and stuff. They're all buying it directly through his website and supporting him. There was even uh, a bug in the, in, the, in the, unfortunately he's using WordPress, so maybe I can convince him to move to Webflow or, or Glide. <laughs> Let's try to do that. Um, but there was a bug where people were paying and they weren't getting the download. And unfortunately there was no way to refund or whatever. So they actually bought his album like four times just to get over that bug. And they weren't complaining. They're like, hey, we're just really happy to support you. Yeah. And that kind of loyalty, when you create that kind of brand, uh, you know, I think is incredible. And I love when I was talking to you about this, I felt that passion. That as you are a genuine musician first, you are not a marketer, you are not a designer, developer. You are like, I believe in music, which is why I'm doing this. So it's a classic example of, you know, I'll, I would work my ass off. So I'm doing what I love, which means I never work a day in my life. Um, and that's, that's the thing. I would rather put all that energy and sweat, blood and tears into something I care about than like, Hey, I'm working for this company or whatever. And like, I know how much you enjoy working at Clyde. Mm. You know, I had a chance to talk with David the other day and you know, he's one of our sponsors for the event, very generous of them. Uh, you know, like, and all these companies, like, even though we're not competing against each other, like in the rumble, all these sponsors are now competing against each other <laughs> where they're like, Hey, I want to do something more for these people. You know, like, yeah screw that company, like I'm gonna do better. So <laughs> David was like, yeah, what's, what's the other guys doing? Okay, okay, I like that, but I'm gonna do something different. And then he said, I'm gonna give a fr one year free pro account to everybody in the Rumble, and then I'm gonna do three years free <laughs> for the winner. And I was like, holy shit, like this is incredible. So that's really cool, um, right. Jack. But I'm thinking, from, I'm thinking now from a design and branding uh, side of this, hmm. how, are we approaching, how are we approaching the, that relationship? I think the website has to be visually very different from every other website. That's very important to me um, because you have, you really have that challenge of uh, preconceived notions. Perception is reality, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So when people hear the word, even like Lee musician, I think is a great name because of that. It's not like, hi, my name is Jack, you know, or like whatever it's like, or you know, like, I, I think piano with Johnny is fine. Um, and I love his work as well, but that is not the most inspired, you know, name. Yeah, no, he, he would do a lot better if you change, if you change his website and branding. Yeah. But maybe he should be in next year's rumble. Um, so, um, but you know, I was thinking like the, the piano background is such a eye catcher. Mm. It demands your attention. When you look at it for the first time, um, you can't take your eyes off of it. Um, and I think that element is going to be very and it's powerful. Part of my content as well. Like I'm working with a motion graphics artist this week to, you know, basically create my own custom version of that for my videos. And it, one of the things we spoke about before is that uh, Corey, who's another rumbler in this, uh, is doing swipe files, which is essentially marketing teardowns. So looking at the front page of Airbnb and saying, yeah. why does it work well? Why is it not? Um, but uh, it, that really inspired me. Like, obviously I've thought about doing that 
in the past, but the word teardowns I'd never thought about or used. And it's like a great way of kind of encapsulating five minutes, pull this apart, understand music, go and take some elements and use it yourself. But what I want to do is that kind of performance of the actual piece at the beginning with that and then unpack it. So it's, mm. it's going to start featuring that kind of style is going to start featuring a lot more in what I do. So hopefully we can embed it and connect the website with that a lot more. I think the platform uh, that Patrick was using, it was called Synthesia. Synthesia, yeah. Called? Although Synthesia on its own looks really boring. Synthesia basically turns MIDI. So this is actually an electric piano. Um, if you play it, the MIDI will, it's like com uh, computerized music inf information is a really bad explanation of what it is. Mm -hmm. Basically, and then you can turn that into these things which fall down. But what Patrick has done is, I don't know quite how he's done it, but <clears throat> he's turned those into this just beautiful particles coming from after. Yeah and stuff like that so we're gonna work isn't that a good example of how you can take something that a lot of people are doing and using and just do it in such a different way that it's like this is his brand now yeah okay. yeah and i love and i would love for you to actually do um uh, a collaboration with patrick one day on, yeah on discord because like you're not you we're not copying him we're getting inspired by him because what he's doing is he's focusing on the youtube platform what we're focusing on is actually like teaching people through this element through this style which is going to be completely custom that's why we're you know going all the way and we're working with visual artists and you know editors yeah. to come up with a unique kind of voice here but i told um, you as well like i really once i've done this once i found my own version of the synthesia like i want to do it for other things like drums top lines like yeah. ambience and stuff like that because i'll just say very briefly my first experience in music when i was eight well sorry I started music when I was six. When I was 17, my ears just totally shifted. And I heard music in another way that was very like mm. visceral and visual. And I would hear music. And now when I listen to music, it's like you see stuff as well. And I want to give people that experience as well, because it's so much more engaging for people who are new to music, you know? That's such a good point. Yeah. And I, I think uh, from a stylistic standpoint, um, I want to talk a little bit about the design and branding process that goes into creating a product. Uh, you know, I've, I've created many products over the years and worked with, I've had the opportunity to work with many companies over the years. And uh, what I've noticed is how much time is wasted on just trying to find the right logo or spend tens of thousands of dollars on the logo, which is crazy to me. Like your product's not even launched. Like what exactly are you spending those resources on? And the word brand is just something I don't even use anymore. Like when I say branding, I don't, I don't even use the word branding anymore. I say like I'm creating your identity. This is your face. This is your, your shirt, your suit and tie. This is how people are going to recognize you. That's it. But, you know, brand, unless you're Apple, you know, unless you're Tim Cook, you don't know what the brand is. The fact that I can go in somewhere, you know, I bet you go to Siberia and there's probably a polar bear somewhere using a MacBook Pro, you know, like <laughs> it's just how it is. <laughs> so that's a brand. Um, what I'm thinking is, you know, what we did with Jack, uh, guys, is we, we, look at, we looked at some references. Um, on Shutterstock, FreePick.com, other websites. And we're like, okay, what captures like our kind of influence, what we're trying to tell? And we combined multiple references, multiple ideas into creating our own. So I want to share my screen real quick. And I want, I want to discuss this with Jack a little bit to unpack this for you guys. This is a promo shot that we did, for example. And here we have essentially a few elements. Number one, you have the hand which is really um, pointing to like the pointer experience, right? Like your, your hand, um, your mouse, your cursor, like I'm clicking on this, I want this course kind of thing. So, so this says a lot about choice, that you as a musician, as a user, you have a lot of choice, this is why you're here. Um, next you have the three colors. So you have the gold, the silver, and the bronze, which is different levels of courses that Jack offers. Next you have the keys, and you have the, uh, which represent the music obviously. Um, and they represent also the instrumental side. So down the line, when Jack does other instruments, I think like he could have a logo that kind of like morphs from logo to logo. Like I just had this idea right now, like this is a piano inside the hand. What if it was a drum kit in another version? And then there was a, you know, a something else. So you, you could go from like doing composition courses to doing entire instrumental courses. You know, like now it's like, I'm teaching you about this instrument and I'm teaching you in a visual way where like, hey, pick it up. And we're going to play it. And as you're playing it, you're going to have these things dropping from the sky or something like, you know, that just visualize the knowledge um, as opposed to just tell me about it. Like my, my dad always tells me, like, it's better for you to tell me something once, uh, to show it to me once uh, and instead of telling it to me a thousand times. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of these long form 
blogs, articles, whatever. It's, it's, just, it's all SEO. It's all SEO. Like it's not, I'm not, and I know many of these people who write these articles, even, like they're just repackaging content that already exists, which just pisses me off. You know, it just feels like there's, n there's no inspiration left in this world. You know, um, there have been times where I just thought like, you know what, I don't even want to do this anymore. Like I straight up don't even want to get involved anymore. So yeah, anyways, long story short, um, the, the black here, the body represents the industry. So you, this, this, uh, this whole ecosystem essentially. And then out of that darkness comes the light, comes the keys, comes the courses, comes the knowledge. So there's like so many uh, um, ways, philosophical ways you can look at it. And also it just works perfectly on like smaller scales. If you want to use this as a favicon, whatever, you can easily even make this mono, you know, monotone, uh, a simple color. Um, how do you feel about uh, the, the kind of visual language you used here for your, for your brand? I think it's great. Yeah. And we've spoken, like, I love the tears thing. Like when we, when you suggested the bronze, silver, gold, I'm like, amazing. Because that's essentially like the tagging system for the website in some ways, you know, obviously you've got the categories of music, but really everyone's asking like, what stage am I at? Or they know that they're a beginner, intermediate or advanced. And just that as a theme is just really fantastic. And it's like very much about a journey. Like when you start out in music, you're immediately hit by this feeling of like, oh my God, this is a hugely long journey to get to where I want to be. Like, mm. and I mean, it's a deeper topic, but my, one of the philosophies behind a musician is obviously doing things more effectively, right? Uh, and more with less, but it's also part of that is about enjoying what you do deeply at every moment as much as possible because so much music education is end game right it's like yeah. in five years when you've got to this point then you'll be able to express yourself <laughs> you know and actually that's just like that's like musical um uh like materialism right where y you think if you you know if i have more stuff i'll be happy right we we don't realize that we do this in subjects as well like, and actually that's detrimental to our progress. So yeah, this theme about the journey up as well and, and the access as well. Um, mm. I know we're reading into it a lot, but I think it's like, there's that cliche, isn't there about like with a logo, you go, mm, it means this and that and stuff. But actually when you're getting behind your brand, it's, it's a great way to focus, you know, everything that you it do and how you think about it. Yeah. yeah, it all starts to make sense. And I even had this idea for the loading icon just now, as we were talking, mm. uh, these these they can just kind of like grow and shrink that's great as well. so it looks like they're playing um and this is uh, this is just another example of how i feel the creative process that you know designers musicians uh, developers everybody really anyone who's creating something original um that brainstorm you know i love that word the brainstorm you know that they go through it is a storm because you're going through so many concepts and you never know like where the, it's very hard to pinpoint genuine inspiration. Where exactly did this idea come from? Uh, you know, and uh, just now as we were talking, like even though we've talked about leading musicians so many times in the last few weeks, I'm still discovering new things of like, wow, let's try this other thing. Like I just had this idea for the footer, Jack, let me know what you think. Let's do like a few minutes of just like a fireside round and yeah, just right. demonstrate how crazy these conversations get sometimes. I feel like I'm slowing down a little bit right now because I don't want to just bombard the community with just all our ideas right now. Yeah, yeah. But what do you think about the footer of, you know, having like a MIDI keyboard in the bottom of the footer where I, uh, based with JavaScript, where I can like click on the keys and it can actually play. And based on the resolution of your page, that keyboard just shrinks. So you'll have like seven keys on, on, on the mobile uh, view. You'll have like maybe, you know, a 14 keys or whatever, 21 keys or whatever in um, yeah. landscape, you know, this kind of thing. And then when you click on these different buttons, it resonates, it leaves a little bit of sound. I mean, could you get those? I mean, I've seen your website, which is absolutely, yeah. you can show the, the thing, but like, <laughs> could you even get the particles coming out when you pray? <laughs> in one month, sound. can you do this in one month? I'll have it to you by Sunday, you know, <laughs> but yeah, that's one of the ideas uh, from a visual standpoint. I love yeah. the whole website being dark. Yeah. Um, it's a far cry from anything else you see on the web today of having yeah. this dark kind of influence. Um, and the website, because you have gold, silver, and bronze mm. that visual style when you, it just goes perfectly with, mm. with black, like black is one of my, is, I'm wearing black right now. It's, my, it's like my favorite color because of that reason. There's a reason why pianos are black and not purple. 
Hmm. You know, there's, there's just a clarity that comes with black and white. And I mean, if, my, if you ask me from a design perspective, like what's my favorite symbol of all time? It's a yin yang. Hmm. You do not beat the yin yang. Like there's just nothing that gets better than that in my mind. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, all yeah. Of you, everything. So I feel like your website is a yin yang. It's, it's the musical I've yin. I'm really drawn to that and like the piano keys as well. Like it's so connected to that. And for me, like it, music is, I think what it is is music for me and what lean musician about is that it's an art and the science like mm. the, the, i mean i use the term because i'm not a scientist so like scientists might be like yeah yeah right but like for me it's using both sides of the brain right that, and that's so yin yang for me is like a great way to to kind of yeah and i think i think another thing i'd love to stray away from is boxes like you know the the typical structure of a website where it's just like cube box panel whatever you know like i want to be able to kind of um, just make everything very abstract. Like for example, if you have to put content in a box, instead of putting it in a box, let's say it's the red color, right? Or like, like it's gold. I'm just gonna blur it out. So it just feels like it's just kind of floating in, like it's like a, like a ink drop almost mm -hmm. on the page. Kind of thing. And it's, you know, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying, um, having this kind of visual style, it differentiates you so much from everybody else immediately. Um, having everything popping up, popping in and, uh, and having also like when you go into a course, like if you're breaking down, like a tear down of fewer leaves, for example, like yeah, yeah. something so popular that everyone knows about, but then it's like, well, what's Jack's interpretation? Like what, how is he tearing this down? Right. What makes this, like, I would love for someone to explain to me why I like that song or yeah. like that not just be like well it works and it's it makes me feel fuzzy inside because it's actually funny when you think about it there are certain compositions that are so powerful that it resonates across cultures mm -hmm. where it's like no one says i hate it everyone's like okay i might not like the piano version but i love the rock version because i'm a rock musician but no one says i hate that music mm -hmm. and but then you know you have very poppy songs where it's like unless you like pop music you're not gonna listen to this so i would love for you to like go into these composition teardowns and be like, well, this is actually the magic of Fear Lee's. Like, duh, duh, duh. you know, like having, having this deep dive into it, which I don't see on the web that much. And then having collaborations with like, uh, hopefully one day even like Hans Zimmer and all these other people, like Rob doing and be like, let's yeah. talk about like why the Batman theme, for example, from Dark Knight, you know, like, duh, duh, you know, like the, that, that really powerful, like those two keys, it's just two keys. But the moment you hear it, you're like, that's Hans Zimmer. You know, uh, it's that storytelling that I feel like your website with this visual style, the sound, the keyboard, the collaborations, it comes together as an overall concept. And that's where I feel like some websites have really nice elements, but they don't come together. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. The, one, one of the things I want to add as well is that, that I need, I'm all the time trying to up my video game, um, but it's, you know, it's slow going because it's just me and I'm producing the content as well. But like one of the things I'd love to do once I've sorted out this visual style of the keys is depending on what you do with your design, I would love us. So one of the things, you know, when you watch a video on a white website and the video is white as well, and then maybe there's a product in the middle of the video and the video likes just merges because it's white, it merges into the website. I would love for us to play with kind of intro motion graphics to the videos so that it's almost like you're like, wait, is that a video? And then you press it and it sort of like goes, or like comes out of the page or something. Or yeah, I've got these vague ideas, but we can explore that more. It's kind of like almost like bouncing out of the page yeah. and then have that soft landing. Yeah. Um, then particles can kind of float out from underneath <laughs> it or something. Like that would be even better. Yeah. But I mean, that is such a strong visual element. And this, this is a testament to what we were talking about earlier about having references is so important. Yeah. Like, don't be nervous. Don't be afraid to look at templates and look at other people's websites and look at whatever, because exactly. you are a product. You are a product of many, many, many products. You are a product of your environment. Um, and I think that the dumbest thing you can do is just open up a Figma page and just be like, let me just draw some boxes. And because no matter what you do, it's going to look like something else. So it's better to know what it looks like to have that reference point. So in this case, I feel like we started off, like I would say at least 80% of our ideas that we just had, like in the last few weeks, has come from that one video on YouTube. Mm. Because it, it, it dictated the dark style of saying like, look at how good those colors look when you have that, you know, the dark background. Mm. Um, it focuses your attention. 
you have to look at it. Like, that's what I like. When it's a white page, it's just like, okay, there's a menu here, there's a box there, you know, it's just like, what am I doing here? Yeah. Another thing I, I like is like, I think the series and uh, the compositions and all, everything that you're doing basically, Jack, I think you don't actually need a menu. That's another really good, interesting point mm. because you don't have like the tons and tons of content. So the, the, the layout is going to be very smooth. I think that we could come up with a one page design and then people, the, the page would act as a menu that if you want to see compositions, click here kind of thing. What do you think? I mean, like, this is an example of one of those things where like, I'm so stuck in my ways in the old website thing that immediately I'm like, no, I can't see that working, but I'm sure that like, you're going to provide some amazing ideas that are going to, you yeah, Sako's going to emotionally blackmail me <laughs> down the road. <laughs> yeah. I can't be that guy on the video. who's like, no, we're not doing that. Like, <laughs> um, it's like, are you sure you want to win $8,000? <laughs> it's like, um, Michael, don't get it wrong. Like, <laughs> that kind of thing. it's like, no, um, I'm thinking, I, I like how the, 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 there is a despair. There is I think, a I think there was one thing just on a practical note about your yeah. point, because I, I absolutely love the ethos of it. But then also another really important thing about Lean Musician as a platform, what I want to provide people is a sense that they know the whole outcome of what they're getting involved in. They can see the big picture. And yeah. it's not necessarily a menu, you can do this in other ways, but like, for example, when you use software that allows you to nest, infinitely nest topics, you know, like I've spoken about this before, but like, you know, that's a really, like, I guess Wikipedia does that. When you look at a huge Wikipedia article, you can see the outline at the beginning and you know what you're gonna get into. And that's really beneficial when you're about to learn something because you go, okay, this person's really thought about this structure. You know, they're really gonna deliver. So the site still needs to have that, like this is a really extensive library feeling rather than this is a one page experience, you know? So it would be really interesting for us to work on that. Like, That's true. Uh, uh, more, no, more for me, uh, the primary goal for me is to just have a more creative navigation system. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, completely. Um, so like maybe even when you scroll down from the piano, you could have the four options and four mm. colorful like blobs. Yeah. But what I don't want to do is put the menu overlapping that piano that piano is so beautiful that i would just literally have the logo and i would have the piano just super you know have the logo superimposed on top of the piano mm -hmm. and i think that would look fantastic mm -hmm. um and also like when you're scrolling through the page i think um something we talked about is like having you know these like when you going back to the fear release when i click on it the first thing i'm gonna see as a header is a piano of you performing the fear release I can watch like the full thing. I mean, how long is it? Is like three minutes, five minutes, the full thing. The, um, so like whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> that means broken into multiple parts, but like, um, you know, you would be able to watch Jack actually play it and see the colorful, like how colorful and exciting it is. Hmm. Um, and that to me is very exciting. Um, and then when you go down the page, it's like, here is, uh, here's like um, the, the free like chapters. We want you to just jump right in and just mm -hmm. watch a few of them. Yeah. And then it's like, here is some 60 second, I just had this idea now as we were talking, like what if you could do like short um, 60 second, like here's what you need to know about composition kind of thing. Oh yeah, um, yeah I've got that go, on it, yeah, for sure. Like yeah, would, there's this big concept that I'm, I've been working on for a long time, just basically a composer needs their own like pattern library. Um, so little short ideas like, you know, a designer might use a simple design principle or a, an icon style or something like that. But, yeah. you know, and those short things would be great. And I also encourage people to make their own. So for sure. Yeah. And I think like uh, a quick, like, um, like a 60 second composition challenge where it's like in 60 seconds, watch me create like off the top of my head, off the dome, freestyling. I want to create this interesting like riff or this interesting, like beginning of a song or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I mean, I, I just thought of this because I did the no code challenge. I, I started a no code challenge uh, last month where basically we do a video like a, like two, three minute video and we have to build something in Webflow in three minutes. And it just demonstrates how fast and efficient these tools are now that, you know, something like, um, like I created the, the last challenge that I did um, was a rebuilding FaceTime, the FaceTime app inside of Webflow. And it just immediately captures your device camera. You can move around. There's filters, effects. And I'm like, if just literally a couple of years ago, I would never have been able to do something like that. Um, and now I can. So what I want is, you know, when we're talking about the particle effect, like let's do this and let's do that. That doesn't, that's not to say that every one of these ideas are going to be possible. Um, but, or that we might have time for it. But it's, 
it's completely, you know, it, it's about just, you know, aiming for the stars to land on the moon. Um, and I feel like very often entrepreneurs and creatives, they put themselves in this box of like, what's my budget? I hate that question. When you're creating something new, you can never know what the budget of that thing is. Like you have to let it kind of breathe, you know, like a fire. You got to let that fire breathe. Don't put too much wood on it. So don't put too many questions on top of it. Just go for it, you know, and take that first step. And I feel like all the products that um, are in the Rumble today, and I can't wait to do, you know, more calls with everybody else and present their products in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, they're all tackling totally different industries um, in really unique ways. And they're all facing that same issue of like, you know, we want to be able to get out of the box. Because, yeah, you know, all of us have come, you know, come, come from like corporate backgrounds, you know, no matter how creative we are, you know, we live in a corporate world. So how do you like get out of that mindset and say, you know what? Yeah, I am still in this environment, but you know, it's kind of like the bird learning how to fly inside of the cage, as I like to put it, you know? And uh, I, I think that it's going to be really interesting to see how all of you fly. Uh, once, once someone just comes along and says, dude, don't even worry about the money. Don't wor even worry about the tools. Like just give me your vision. And the question I put to all of you, and I'm going to put to you now again, is if you had a million dollars, what would you do with it? And when I ask people this, usually they're just like sniggering and giggling like, oh, well, you know, like I would buy a Maserati or something. Like you guys don't get it. One million dollars is not that much money. Oh. If you genuinely felt that you could have that much money, you wouldn't be answering stupidly like that. You would start to really think like, wow, okay, this is how, where I would go with it. But if you say I have a thousand dollars, what can I do with a thousand dollars? Not much. <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the correct answer. Not much you can do with it. But if you understand that, okay, I don't necessarily know all the steps of where I'm going right now, but if, you know, if I present this correctly, if I get enough people involved with this, then I can get to that million dollars, right? I can get to that trampoline. Um, so if you had a million dollars, where would you want Lean Musician to go? Um, well, obviously I, you know, I don't have a ton of experience in this sort of area. So my, my thought could be very wrong. Um, I mean, I called my company lean musician for a reason. Like I could really dig that obviously methodology of like, just trying to work out. I think, I think I'd just go on a, a few series of tests initially to work out whether I'd spend a bit of money creating a few very short MVP courses or something like that, or even just adverts to like see whether people want to buy courses from high level musicians. So I'd pay like two or three really high level musicians and mm -hmm. kind of, record a couple of videos that gave users the impression that there is a course coming out soon. And then like I can market that course or those courses and see how much sign up there was. Um, Cause I still haven't validated that as an idea. Like, you know, I validated that people want to buy my courses, but maybe people aren't interested in learning from, you know, I think they are, but um, that'd be the first thing. I don't know, like big vision. Uh, I get help with the editing. I get help with the content design. I'd get probably another composer on board who would like, help produce and make stuff um, and prepare sessions for me. But yeah, no, I, I haven't got a huge big vision of it at the moment yet because I, I'd need help thinking it through from like mentors or investors. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, and I think you know, that's that, that cross pollination. Like I've already seen how Corey's ideas, you know, the marketing teardowns he's doing has really mm -hmm. influenced you in a very good way. Yeah. Um, I think um, a good idea would be to have a mailing list um, uh, that would be able to, like every month, like once a month, you'd be able to just be like, here's one premium chapter from one of my courses that I'm giving out for free to the community. Like just, sure. you know, kill people with kindness is what I'm saying. Just kill them, bury them in kindness. And then when you're like, now I'm offering a $99 all access pass for the year, they're like, really just 99? Yeah. You know, I think you deserve more, you know, but if you just, uh, there are platforms today that they can't convince people to spend 10 bucks. So, yes. you know, the value proposition has to really be there. Yeah. For sure. And, and I like the fact that you're starting with the value proposition. Mm. Um, you're, you're not starting with, hmm, how, do I, how many payment options should I have in my website? <laughs> so um, to, I wanted to give one example to the, guy, uh, to the community uh, before yeah. we move on about how we look at you know, going about building these products. So something I've done is, you know, if we go to Webflow real quick, there we go, let's go to templates. Um, I like to sit down with, not just with all of you, but 
whether it's clients or uh, you know other people I'm partnering with, and I just want to sit down with them and say, look, um, I want to understand your style. Um, I think it is a waste of time to you know meet someone new and just create a hundred custom things because that person might hate all of it. You don't know what that person likes. You don't know what that person's focusing on. So here, you know, this is the latest, literally the latest one. This I'm seeing this for the first time today. Look at this. Like what an interesting concept, like from a restaurant, like, you know, I own a restaurant business. So like, uh, when I look at this approach, you know, yeah, there are similarities, you know, it's not like the first time I've seen this layout, but I love the originality of having this effect, you know, vertical social, you know, kind of icon approach. I love how, you know, just loads in and then I just get, you know, the content floating in like this and I get what I need. So like, I would sit down and be like, Jack, what do you think of like, you know, having a menu like this? Or like, what do you think of these particular elements? Like, do you you see how it goes, you know, the yin yang effect we were just talking about? What if like when I hover on the logo, what if it inverts, for example? Like, so these kind of discussions, like these kind of templates and, um, you know, references are really going to help your creative process um, to kind of get to a point where you already know where you want to go next. Mm -hmm. But what usually happens is people just open up an empty page and then they're lost. They have, you know, writer's block where it's like, what do I do now? You know, people who write books, if you look at uh, George R. R. Martin with Game of Thrones, they're like, hey, do you like Lord of the Rings? Like, do I like it? Like, that's what inspired me. That was the thing. Like, I, th- that's where I got my creativity. That's where I got my influences from to, to do Game of Thrones, you know? And what he did was he studied his, essentially his mentor, you know, uh, with J.R. Tolkien. And then he took a completely different approach to fantasy. And now Game of Thrones is, you know, crafting its own world that is so different from Lord of the Rings that now it's almost people, uh, the people, unfortunately, are now pitting it against each other, which is just weird to me. Hey, I've so, just seen the, look, look, bottom right, telly. No, now top right. The, oh, yeah. look, that's a new one uh, for video. Oh, yeah. I heard of this one. Let's have a look at that. Sure. And this ties in, by the way, with the uh, member stack and everything already, which is really cool. Hmm. Interesting. I'm glad people are getting around to this. This is great. Like yeah. So for example, like a good starting point maybe for us uh, would be to maybe use uh, the components from Tele with our completely different design approach mm. uh, and then tie it in directly to member stack because this is already built for member stack. Mm. What do you think of that? Sounds great. Yeah. I mean, that just speeds up the process so much. Like, why do you have to go and build all these components? Like, here's a box. Here's another box. You know, like, why am I building boxes when I could be building products? You know, it just makes no sense, right? Um, and that's why, like, today when they say, like, a web design, web design to me is absolutely dead at this point. Like, it's just interfaces at this point, right? Filled with different pictures. Like, um, how many times have we seen this layout, for example, with just four boxes? or this menu with, you know, whatever, like this, this is not design. This is already just functionality. <laughs> it's not really, you know, there's nothing inspired about it. So I'm thinking like telly from a design point, I don't like it all. Like as a designer, I, I, I feel like this is a good kind of wireframe of like, here's what's possible. Um, and what we can do is we can take it from there and say, okay, like, like for example, here's a video, you know, here's a structure. Um, and uh, I know he has uh, courses here. Let me go into it. Let me see, videos, all videos. Like here, he already has like a filtering system. I think he, I think he uses JetBoost, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll look into this in a second. Hmm. Uh, but look, you know, you have all these categories here and you can just, you know, tie this into member stack, obviously. Um, and, then, and then you get all the content. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there is definitely a lot of building blocks. And I think that's the right way to think of a template or think of, you know, these clonable assets, whether it's in Glide or Webflow anywhere else. Uh, of like, how can I take this building block and build a completely different building with all these other blocks, you know, yeah. as opposed to, let me just put my logo instead of telly, I'll have Melly. Um, instead of videos, I'll have footage. <laughs> instead of, you know, pages, I'll have uh, slides and then I'm going to launch that. I see this all the time. Mm. Um, and that's why, like, I've made it a point to never take on projects like that. I don't work with those kind of projects. It just, it dumbs me down as a human being. It's just like, it's the most common, uh, you know, common, the low common denominator thing, bottom of the barrel thing you could possibly do. That's like if someone comes to you and just says, Jack, could you just, you know, 
played the old McDonald had a farm and then just like changed two of the notes. And it's like, what? Like <laughs> Hans Zimmer says this all the time. He's like in his masterclass, he's like, I hate when people come here, directors come to me and say like, they, they show me footage and in the background they're using the Dark Knight soundtrack. <laughs> it's like, we're so influenced by your work. He's like, do you want me to just build that same thing over, you know, compose that again? Like, why don't we sit down and talk about what inspires us next? Um, so uh, on that note, uh, Jack, I'm really looking forward to this week spending some more time with you. Yeah. Uh, I want us to have, with each uh, Rumbler, I want to spend essentially two videos or maybe maximum three, depending on what, the, what they're doing because we have eight of them. So I don't want to also bombard the community with videos. Um, and of course, time is of the essence. Uh, yeah. But I feel like one video where we explore the product, one video where we build it and we actually show like how this all comes together as components. Um, and then of course I'll go, you know, get in my bat cave and then I'll go uh, build in uh, build in all the elements and designs and layouts. Yeah. And I'm thinking we can even do screenshots during the development process and be like, here's a screenshot of like the next stage of Lean Musician. Like we just did the landing page, for example. Like in a second, uh, we're gonna go on Webflow and do that. And then we're gonna tie it to this video and we're gonna launch it on the Twitter account. So guys, please follow us at twitter.com slash no code rumble. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe at rumble.pro. We're gonna have all the links in the description below. Um, and, uh, what we're also going to be doing is I want this to really become an annual event, uh, not, uh, that takes place, not just once a year, but actually goes on throughout the year. So the idea I had was if this goes well, and I think it already is, we already have so much support from the community. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to spend four weeks, like a primary event, like March 1st to April 1st, every year is going to be the no code rumble month because March 1st is the beginning is the, of spring. And it's just such a symbolic kind of month to just start, you know, sharing ideas like this. And we're going to pick, you know, like a bunch of different rumbles each year, uh, rumblers each year who come in with totally different products. And then we're going to select like a chief maker uh, expert from the community. In this case, it's me. Um, and that person is going to be building these products with that community. But what I'd like to also point out is that it's not like Saco is just building, doing the Webflow stuff. We have Steven Hilario who's building you build that XYZ. I can't wait to talk about his platform uh, and, uh, later on in the other rumbles, uh, other videos. Um, you know, he's helping with JetBoost. He's helping with a lot of these other backend like Zapier integrations and all this kind of stuff for the tools. And then Jack who works at Glide is helping the community build their Glide apps, which is so cool of you um, uh, to, you know, put yourself, put your hat in the ring and say like, I can help with this. And just kind of begs the question that if everyone can help each other launch industry class products in just four weeks, why isn't everyone doing that? Like, you know, why are we all just, uh, why is everyone just lonely islands? We're like, oh shit, I need $300,000 to do whatever. Like I, uh, I've been talking to investors who are gonna be kind of secretly looking into uh, the rumble to see how it comes together because what they're telling me is that this is like an accelerator on steroids. It's like a live accelerator. That's being live streamed, basically, where everyone is just accelerating at <laughs> really fast paces. They have to build these products in, in a matter of days, not even months. Um, and, you know, they're saying that if we would love to invest in some of these products, which is why what I'd like you to, to do, Jack, is create a future page, a future tab, where you're going to be listing a lot of these features that you're like, you know what, even like 10 years from now, like I know where I want to go. Like I, I remember you mentioned to me about like, I want to do AI composing. I want to have a page where like, you can use artificial intelligence to do these courses and stuff. And I'm like, that, that is awesome. Like I would, I would want to live in that future. Um, you know, if you start here, you'll end up here. That's always the case, you know? So why don't you just start here and, and, <laughs> and then just let the universe take care of the rest. Um, so with the rumble, what we're going to do is after the four, four weeks, every Sunday, we're going to let you know what we've done past week, what's coming next at the end of the rumble, at the end of the March, uh, we're going to be hosting a voting, uh, a voting system or create a voting system where everyone from the community can vote. And the best product is going to win $8,000 courtesy of um, Codeless Ventures created by Michael Gill. Um, and we also have amazing perks and services advantages that are being given to all the rumblers, which is super generous from everyone in the community. So all these major big companies are all coming together. Um, and what we're also going to be doing uh, is surprise appearances from the makers from key investors and sponsors and everybody to, who want to just, they don't want to just come say hello and just, you know, do a PR stunt. They actually want to roll up their sleeves literally and say, Hey, how can I help with this? So for example, um, a jet boosts, uh, founder is going to be, you know, so, uh, Chris Spags wants to step in at one point with Steven and be like, Hey, let me, let me help set up jet boost for some of these products, which is so cool. Like name me one other industry where 
you know, creators, makers, sponsors, everybody can just come together on such an equal level playing field. Um, and this has been my vision, you know, from the start is how do we create this global event that just brings the whole community together on an equal playing field? No one is better than anybody. No one is trying to put down anybody else. Like we're all going to come out of this stronger, better, more you know, educated about all this. And we're going to come out with a great advantages and perks for our products too. Uh, and every three months I want to be basically checking in like I'm already talking to podcasts, webinars, like radio hosts and stuff who want to check in with their favorite products and be like, so where are we now? You know, we need to encourage using products from created by the no code community, not just the tools. Like uh, most of these tools feel like demos. They don't feel like platforms because someone just sat down and was like, Hey, I, I had this cool idea of Zapier and Airtable and whatever coming together. I'm like, okay, that is cool, but that is not useful. There's a difference between useful, right? The, in Dribble, for example, you'll see so many designers posting these concepts of UIs and UXs that just make no sense in the context of a bigger product. It just doesn't, I wouldn't even know where to start using that product. So I feel like all of you are going to have the challenge of a lifetime. I'm going to have a challenge of a lifetime building this. Uh, <laughs> so that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, see, Jack wasn't laughing with me. He was laughing at me there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's going to be um yeah it's going to be fun and what i want to know also is like how each of you can collaborate with each other that's one thing i want to touch upon before we leave as well um like i see you and Corey, for example like doing teardowns together one is marketing one is music like how can we do musical market like um how would you market a product that is so different from the typical you know like uh, marketing design or marketing companies um just you know throwing an idea out there mm -hmm. um, i I totally see like Andrew with insurance, for example, collaborating more with Ritika in India, who is yeah. doing like products that uh, tend to be catered to nomads as well. Mm. Um, so in this way, I want to show people that if you work together, there's nothing you can't create together. And the resources now that you need to build products are so low, the barrier to entry is so low, that there's really no reason except complacency, apathy, and just utter laziness. Um, and I think when you just the best way to push to take that first step is to just jump into the pool and learn how to swim. That's actually how I learned to swim. You know, someone just pushed me in and I just figured out, Oh shit, like I have to survive. I got to learn now. Um, and that's why I feel like this event, this, this is really the most brutal experience because you're jumping off the cliff and assembling the plane as you go down. And I can't wait to see where we all fly together. So on that note, Jack, I really appreciate your time. Thanks yeah. for sharing the position with us. Thank you. Uh, I, I want us to just, keep creating together, even after the rumble. Um, I feel like we're really becoming almost like a family, like a team um, that inspires each other. It's, it's just so encouraging to see, like we come from so many different cultures and backgrounds and languages and philosophies. And uh, we can all just say, you know what? At the end of the day, the human experience is creating together. And I think if more people created, spent more time creating, even as a hobby, even if it's something that's just for you, I think that would just make the world a better place. And I hope the No Code Rumble can turn into a music rumble where musicians come together to rumble together and do something, right? Or something else. Uh, so I'm going to just call this Rumble Inc. and just be done with it. <laughs> so, dude, I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. See you, man. Take care.